This is a pressure sensor from an uh, old coffee maker and uh, I happen to be working on a ventilator and know that I'm going to be needing a pressure sensor. I don't know what kind of pressure range this is but I'm just going to go ahead and remove it before I throw this board away. So I'm going to use hot air because I need to be able to melt all six of these pins or actually here, let's take a look at this there's three on this side and three on the other. Uh, my plan is to melt the three on one side and then get in there with a screwdriver like uh, get a little micro flathead screwdriver get him out of the way then I can lift the one side up so once those pins are melted now I don't want to damage the plastic housing of the pressure sensor because it probably would be useless at that point. I was starting to melt the silicone with the hot air. I, I think it would damage the pressure sensor so I'm going to use the soldering iron. It's going to be very tricky to get all of the uh, pins heated up at the same time so but at least that way the heat will be more directed to the contacts that I want so that one just melted that one just melted all right uh, I'm also gonna attempt to remove a good portion of the solder with this solder sucker. So that got a good bit of it. Sometimes if you can get enough, you can break the pin f free. Because solder it is um, either tin or lead and is very uh, weak. There's just a small connection point. All right, well that's interesting. It left a little tower of solder. Just add a little extra solder in there. Can't quite see what I'm doing. Yep. So now that most of the solder is removed, just take the screwdriver and give a quick push, okay, to that pin to break it free. I'll try the same there and there. So I think all three of these pins are released. See if I can gently wiggle the, oh, wow. Okay, excellent. Mm. Looks good. The reason why I sometimes add extra solder is because it, ha it allows the heat flow to transfer a little quicker. Wow, that looks great. Um, since it's a liquid, it can sort of just lay between the iron and the target solder. Um, but it'll melt eventually. Okay, I think those are ready for breaking free. Let's see, where are they? They're on this side. And he's free, he's free. And look at that. So uh, what I would say I learned from this is uh, you don't have to remove entirely all the solder from around the pin um, because you can go in with a screwdriver and push it away from the side that it is sticking to because it usually will stick to just one side. Uh, as long as you removed enough solder to where there's open space inside the hole, then you can detach it carefully. What you don't want to do is just start prying on it and yanking on it from the top while the pins are still firmly solder, connected with solder because you'll
probably just um, break the pins. Um, but coming at it from this side, it the solder just doesn't have a chance. But now you have to get most of the solder off though, so do make sure that um, that it's just about yeah. It's it's only for uh, whenever the solder's just hanging on by a little bit on one side. So um, each component can be can kind of have its own challenges in how you remove it. Surface mount stuff usually can just come off with a hot air gun, but you get into these kind of exotic packages, um, you may have to get creative. So hopefully you learned something from this video, and uh, thanks for watching.